I'm delighted to say Gareth A. Davis is back with us. Gareth, good morning to you. How are you? Very good morning, Jared and Shane. Good morning. Uh, we are excited. We think about the prospect of one of the most eagerly anticipated fights of the last decade finally being made. And we're just very close to it. There's like a finger hovering over the button, but the button, as far as we know, has yet to be pressed. What's your understanding of where we are with regards to the fight actually finally being made? Well, between Fury and Joshua, obviously. Um, uh, well, we hope the the fight goes ahead and we hope that it will be signed this week. I mean, uh, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Um, I, I won't believe it. I remain sceptical about it until they genuinely sign the contract and, and, you know, we have a press conference saying that these guys are going to step in a ring together. Um, we're told it's December the 3rd. Principality Stadium in Cardiff. As you say, it would be a massive occasion if it does happen. I, I, I do tend to think that it's maybe a bluff that Fury made, you know, a couple of weeks ago that's kind of gone right. Um, and a series of fortuitous events would get them in the ring together. It, it makes sense in a lot of ways um, for Anthony Joshua to take it and it, it, it makes sense for him not to take it as well but um, I really hope it's going to get over the line it's a massive fight over here uh, one that looked a long long way away when, when Joshua lost twice to Alexander Usyk but the way that certainly the algorithm in, in heavyweight boxing is very weird so it wouldn't surprise me if it falls apart but it wouldn't surprise me if it happens if I can put it like that what do you think is... Um, let, let's start with the Joshua side of it. What's his motivation for getting in against Fury at this stage of his career? Well, look, he's lost three of his last five. He's desperately frustrated with himself that he lost those two fights to Alexander Usyk. I was out there in Saudi Arabia. It was a much improved performance. Sorry, I'm, I've set my alarm at the wrong time. For That's all right. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, but the... Um, the, the he was desperately disappointed with himself for the loss to um, to Yusik in, in in Saudi Arabia. It was a terrible performance a year earlier in in at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium here in London, um, and I think he knows that Tyson Fury could have fought Alexander Usyk and kind of walked away, and no one would have had a doubt that, or, or there wouldn't have been enough doubt there that people would debated, oh, Joshua might have beaten. Fury, and he could have walked away potentially and, and not boxed again Fury and, and, and probably would have ended up as the dominant figure in the era. Um, so the fact he gets the opportunity to fight Fury is one thing, and, and he probably believes he can beat Fury. So there's a kind of, there's a parallel route there where it's it's kind of, there's a lot of jeopardy there for him. There's a lot of risk. He's really rolling the dice because conventional boxing wisdom would say, don't come, don't fight your toughest fight when you on the back of two losses. Um, but if he takes it now, he, obviously he's earning really well from it, and he wins. And as Eddie Hearn told me last week, he's God again. You know, he's God. Um, I don't think he beats Fury now, um, but yeah, again, I think those two things: it's a chance to fight Fury that he might never have. And it's a chance to get back and win the WBC belt, of course, the belt he's never won, but a chance to beat Fury. So um, I, I think that's the that's the drive for him, that's the motivation. In terms of the actual matchup itself, right, you, you said conventional wisdom is about not fighting after the, the two successive defeats. I think conventional wisdom would suggest that people think that whatever skills Usyk have, has Fury also has, except he's also just a much bigger man. So there's a possibility he gets dominated in this fight and while if he wins, he's God. If he loses badly, could that be the end? We're certainly close to the end game. There's no doubt about it. It's close to an end game. But there's still he's still a massive commodity in the boxing world. He's still a huge draw. People will... I think Frank Warren and um, Eddie Hearn, the, the rival promoters on both both sides of the, uh, of the negotiation, believe it'll do two million pay-per-view buys. I don't disagree with them at all. Um, I mean, you know, and if it's if it ignites even more, and they 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 really build it, I haven't got long, remember. Um, but I, I think it will be a big fight. And like you say, if 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 Joshua is embarrassed in the fight, um, 
and he's popped by Fury's jab and Fury dominates him and, and, and beats him up and stops him in six, seven, eight rounds, then then it could be a tough road for, for Joshua. But I still think there's a Deontay Wilder fight there and a, a Dillian White fight. I th- think there's still an appetite there. He's earned, He will have earned hundreds of millions anyway um, by the time he's fought Fury, I think people will be interested in a Dillian White fight and a Deontay, Deontay Wilder fight with Joshua is a shootout. And Dillian White and, 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 and Joshua has all the kind of fire. It's got, there's a fire under it because they don't like each other. So there's still a couple of fights there. But that kind of, that, the redemption road is, is December the 3rd. It's, it's, it's getting over the bridge to Cardiff. Um, that, that, that's the redemption night. For me... He did perform a hell of a lot better in Saudi Arabia against Yusuf. And in the ninth round, um, he was brilliant and he went for it. And I had him 5-4 at that point. I know a lot of people don't agree with those that scoring, but Joshua put on a much better performance. His problem is his boxing IQ, and he's admitted that. He wishes he'd had a longer amateur pedigree. And as you rightly say, Fury's a tricky opponent. Six foot nine, elusive. Um, in and out, um, almost in a trance when he fights, but in some ways might be less elusive just to give a little bit of open door for Joshua. He may be a slightly easier opponent than a tricky southpaw because he's orthodox for Joshua. So it's a good... Look, we're all excited by it, aren't we? We want the fight to be signed. It'd be amazing to see. A year and a half ago, the, it was the richest, probably the richest fight we've ever seen in British boxing. Um, it's still close to being that now, probably worth £80 million. So please, let's get it over the line. Uh, Gareth, I've heard the argument made uh, regarding Joshua that you know he has so many business interests outside the ring as well that, that he has to focus on and, and give time to. And look, without diving into the realm of, of excuses territory for Joshua here and, and fair play to him for having all those business interests but if you're fighting someone like Tyson Fury it's really tough from a boxing perspective to have your thoughts anywhere else outside the ring is that something that he's going to have to maybe put to put to one side if he has a fight like this coming up? Yeah, I mean, look, look, look how we are with him though, you know um, he's got too many interests um, the, he's so easy to criticise and yet he's done so little wrong other than lose three fights and he avenged one of them against Andy Ruiz I find myself thinking about that with him that, you know, he had 36, 36 odd amateur fights before he won the Olympic super heavyweight gold a decade ago pretty much a decade ago to the day um, it, well, it was, no, it was, it was August, wasn't it? but the the he's earned hundreds of millions of, of pounds he's he, he's done nothing wrong in 10 years. He's been an emblematic of a great period in boxing. Um, he's definitely brought boxing to the fore in, the, in, 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 in this country and, you know, in, and for lots of other boxers. He's been very much a gravy train. Um, I'm told that he is really dedicated behind the scenes we don't see a lot of him by the way we only see him in fight weeks and you know in the odd training day you know they're, they're very much less is more i i don't i have i just think that he's i just think that he's come up against there's a couple of guys in in this generation in in this boxing era in alexander Usyk and tyson fury who have greater skills than him and i think at the very elite level at the very top where changing the pattern of a fight or changing the pattern of a game, whatever it is, relies on a brilliance. Um, he's just fallen short with his boxing abilities. I don't, I don't, I think he has got a lot of interests outside, but as far as I can see, he's utterly dedicated to his task. From Fury's perspective, was this the richest fight available to him, do you think? Because, again, talking about motivation, you've explained really well what... Joshua's motivation is um, it's a it's a massive gamble, but there is also then if he if he performs well in defeat, there those other fights against um, Wilder, I think in particular would definitely have a, a market. Um, from Fury's perspective, is he just ticking stuff off before he he finishes, or is it like well that's the easiest fight that I can make and make the most money off? What do you think is going on in his head when he's um, engaged in that game of bluff that ultimately he wins? 
Well, that's a, that's a thesis question, really, because what's going on in Tyson Fury's head at eight oh seven in the morning um, on a Wednesday <laughs> morning is is such a deep subject that probably he doesn't even know. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's Tyson Fury is a law unto himself. To, I mean, if I was to mooch around in his head right now, um, I. I <sighs> Obviously, as we know with Tyson, he retires and he's going to fight. I mean, I remember him telling me, I, I did a couple of tour dates with him um, recently, um, you know, the, his um, his after-party tour, his homecoming tour. And, um, you know, he was genuinely on the phone that night in Bristol when I was with him uh, on stage. He was on the phone to the world's strongest man, the Mountain, talking about having a fight with him in November. That was probably a few weeks ago. Um, he is thinking, he, he, he did, <laughs> I did get teased and warmed up that he was having a fight with Derek Chisora. Um, I had heard about Manuel Cha in the background. I think for Tyson Fury, he, he you know, he's so, he, the transformation in him as a, as a person and his public facing persona um, is, you know, someone who, He's a huge star, isn't he? He's become a massive mainstream star in a different way to to that which Anthony Joshua is, um, and I think he's. I think he's conflicted. I think he wants to walk away, but then when he doesn't box or go to the gym for a while, I think his his, his mind wanders and he's not as happy. And obviously. He's, He's de definitely devoted to his family. I, I, I've been around him with his family. He loves his family. There's no doubt about that. Um, but w with his mental health issues, I think he needs to be active and needs to be creative. I mean, he's found an avenue there, you know, with the WWE. He turns up in Cardiff and he, you know, forearm smashes someone in the WWE and it looks like he's just stood up and done it from the VIP seats. But it's all kind of organised. There's so much he can do. There's a Netflix series being made about him at the moment. There's... There's a third book out. There's as his his ferocity drinks. I think all these things with Fury, um, he needs to be busy. So I think in his mind, kind of in pugilistic terms, I think he's definitely in his mind. I genuinely think he wanted to fight Joshua and he wanted to fight Usyk. And after that. There isn't really anyone else. He may fight Wilder for a fourth time, but I, I mean, I remember asking him after the third Wilder fight, is that enough now? And there's a part of him that thinks it's enough. Um, he has spoken to me about the dangers of being in big bruising fights. I mean, he has been dropped four times by Wilder. There's, um, he's been in big bruising fights. So I think to go back to two weeks ago, I think it was a bluff. I think he thought, you know what, I don't want a treading wall to fight because Usyk doesn't want to fight me because they planned to fight Usyk on December the 17th. Usyk said he wasn't ready. He was obviously buying time um, to be ultimately in his fittest possible condition to fight Fury. So they, so Usyk withdrew until it was going to be February next year. And then Fury thought, I don't want a treading wall to fight in December. And I think he sat there one day and he went, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call Joshua out and I think that's what happened and I think because he thought you know why don't I fight Joshua now what's the problem we're both free I can't fight you sit yet and I think that's what happened I think that's how we've got here today that's my theory on it so um, his so plan well. is to have that fight, win that fight, and then fight Usyk. And from a boxing perspective, perhaps right off into the sunset of WWE or some, you know, yeah. like uh, Ali style fighting um, kind of. Well, whoever, yeah, exact exhibitions. Yeah. And we see it all the time now. I mean, Mayweather's going down the list, isn't he? I, I think Conor McGregor will do it at some point. You know, um, the, you know, it, it, it's what it's it's what's going on right now. I mean, it, that, you know, it's just one of those things. If you can get eyes on it you you can but um I, I i think you're right i think beat joshua beat Usyk. he doesn't really he's the veritable number one he's the king of the jungle in this era in the heavyweight there is no question about it if he beats those two but he you know it's it's conceivable if the joshua fury fight is entertaining and goes 12 rounds and goes points which is which is definitely possible um then they do, they do it again you know um and then 
you know, he stretches out fighting Usyk the year after or whoever it is at that point. Maybe it's Joe Joyce who's beaten Parker who wins the WBO. And, um, you know, Fury's 34. I mean, he could easily, heavyweights are in their prime at this age. He could easily go on to 36. But, you know, how much is enough, you know? You said there, you know, 12 rounds could be quite possible, Gareth. And I know it's, it's early to be having this look ahead and the bookies have probably had their say in terms of who the favourite is already. Uh, we had Gavin Casey, the Irish boxing journalist, on off the ball quite recently and he said if they fought 10 times, Fury probably wins all 10. But you have to remember he was dropped by Wilder as well. Like, is there is there any argument you can make for, for Anthony Joshua beating Tyson Fury? Yeah, you can. He's got a, he's got a massive puncher's chance and, and, and he, he's he's... It only takes a prime fury, a prime fury on the night wins. There's no question in my mind. But a slightly off-kilter fury or one that gets injured during the fight or um, one who's too reckless, you can't write Anthony Joshua off completely. He does have a chance, but um, definitely. But um, for me, I think if, if, if fury goes in in that trance-like state, I think he just, I think he keeps Joshua in control behind his jab. He ties him up. Um, he moves. Um, there's probably a couple of moments of drama, but I think he breaks him down. And, you know, Joshua's shown some vulnerability around the chin as well. So I, I, I see an eight, you know, an eighth, ninth round stoppage for, for Fury. That's how I see the fight. This is, is we expect it to be made this week if it's going to get made. Like, it, it's going to happen very quickly. The date seems to be December the 3rd in Cardiff. Um, the split seems to be 60-40. A lot of those details have been made public in a way that suggests that those conversations have been had, you know, just from, from watching these stories over the years, there's a lot of detail here versus some previous times where, oh, this fight's about to be made and we don't really know the terms of it. So uh, has there, is everything acceptable, do you think, at this stage? Is your instinct, I know you said you wouldn't be surprised either way, but is your instinct that we're more likely to see this happen and if it is going to happen, it's going to happen in the next 48 hours or so? I'm sorry to give you a kind of really anodyne answer, but my, my, my instinct is to be sceptical. Right. Um, because, um, yes, the initial agreements are there, you know, the fight agreements, December 3rd, Cardiff, these two guys, 60-40 split. Um, but now we're into the detail. The contract went over last Friday. Obviously, the, the death of um, Elizabeth II, the Queen, um, caused a bit of delay because they didn't want to um, do, they wanted to, you know, be respectful and not, you know, go out, go, go get into the detail in that period, and wanted a couple of days off um, because people were mourning and the country was in mourning. So, uh, and again, yesterday will have delayed it. So, um, it's, it depends whether they whether they agree on the fine print. Now, um, the broadcasters we hear are on board. I spoke to Eddie Hearn last week. I think Thursday he was in Las Vegas for Canelo and Golovkin, and he was some. Um, saying that they're just about to get the contract, they've got the contract on Friday. It all comes down to that detail on whether they agree on it, you know. What those things are, we don't know at the moment. Um, you know, obviously Fury will walk last, he's the champion, all those kind of things. But um, it's whether they really want it now, and if they do really want it, we will get the fight. OK. Well, we're looking forward to it. And as you said, we are excited about it, genuinely, at this stage, because it's not too late. It's not. It, it doesn't have the bang of... Um, Mayweather, Pacquiao, which was like two years after we actually really wanted to see it. This is still just in that window where we think, OK, this is this is good. Uh, one thing I did want to ask... They're still in their prime. They're still in their prime, so it's fine, in my view. It's just, you know, Joshua, Joshua's been a little bit exposed by 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 a boxer with, with brilliant skills who's smaller and, 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 you know, waspish in the ring and moves around very cleverly. But, you know... He's, he's, he's not a busted flush, in my view. I mean, he's, he has been a little bit gun-shy. That was a much-improved performance in Saudi. Yeah, I think that's all fair. One last thing I just wanted to ask you. Chris Eubank Sr. has been very public about his concern about the make-weight fight that Chris Eubank Jr. is going to fight Conor Ben at in basically less than a month. It's a couple of weeks now at the O2 yeah. Arena. Um, it's £157 is the weight. Is, is Chris Eubank Sr., does he have a point here? Yeah, he does, because it is dangerous when you're cutting weight. But Chris made 160 regularly. He's got to lose three more pounds. It's not inordinate. Um, the Boxing Board of Control are, are monitoring. I spoke to them last week when Chris, Chris Eubank Sr. raised those concerns. 
Um, I did speak to um, the boxing board and they said they're monitoring regularly on the way to the way. And I've had a very deep conversation with Chris. I think I wrote a piece in the Telegraph about it last week, actually, in which Chris um, was saying he's not taking a nutritionist, which seems a little bit foolhardy, but he, um, he's got notes from his entire career on what foods were good and bad for him. And he said if he doesn't, if he gets close and he, to the fight and he isn't dropping those final, say, three or four pounds, then, then he will um, you know, get help on board. Um, look, I think his father raised concerns. He's lost one son already, tragically, last year. So that's a father-son conversation. Chris wants him, his father in the corner. Um, but, I, but I think, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's a fight that will go ahead. I, I mean, I, and yes, he, he's made those concessions. It makes it it's very big over here, this fight. You know, it's, it's very, there's a lot of interest in it. You know, DAZN are using it like they did with Canelo and Golovkin and, 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 and KSI and Swarms, if I can say that, because I was at that with Talk Sport the other day as well. It sold out the O2 Arena as well uh, in, in a couple of hours. Um, YouTube uh, celebrity boxing. Um, and and I, think, I think there's concerns on both sides because cause Ben is coming up, Conor Ben is coming up in a lot of weight as well. It's... You know, it's two weight divisions. Welterweight to middleweight is always a big challenge. You know, Sugar Ray Leonard did it successfully against Marvin Hagler all those years ago in a fight where he was elusive. But it's the other way around in in this contest. It's Ben who likes to come forward against Eubank, who's who's very, very. Um, he's a very resilient fighter. Who's I think is underrated. Chris Eubank uh, Jr. I think he's underrated in his career. He's been in with some really good opponents. He only lost to George Groves and Billy Joe Saunders. No harm there. Look what mm. George Groves did. Look what um, Billy Joe Saunders did. So um, I think it's a terrific fight. Yes, there, there are always concerns about cutting weight because it's not good for the membrane around the brain. It's not good for the, you know, the inherent dangers that exist uh, in boxing. But these fighters want these fights and they're all also earning an extraordinary amount of money, Jer, for, for doing this. Gareth, we'll leave it there. Always great to talk to you. Thanks a million for joining us. Gareth A. Davis there uh, giving us the insight into what's going to happen over the next while.